Uh, we'll start the uh, Village of North Bend Board of Trustees meeting for Tuesday, uh, November 8, 2016. Apologize for the uh, accommodations. Um, <laughs> seem to be missing some lights because it's voting day. The, our normal venue is occupied. So we're next door today. Um, first item on the agenda, review and approve minutes. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the warrant. You had a vote of page two. I had a question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it may go to Norm rather than you, Mary. But is this the last payment to MSK Engineering? Uh, I don't know. No, I don't no. think so. Okay. This is for the three thousand six hundred something. Yeah. Wait, really but also on here is the is the big nut to to uh, white weaver. Wait a minute. That might be. I know she sent an email. Abby. She, she did just yeah. recently. Yes, that might be the last one for them okay. as well. Great. I think that's, let's hope so. Okay. I thought Jason was going to come in and talk to us about the completion, uh, but I'm not sure about that. When did you talk to him? When I met with him, whatever day that was, several weeks ago. Oh, yeah. since then we've had some. Yeah. You, you talked to him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And right. we'll talk about it. As long as somebody that. followed up. Yep. Okay. Um, the other, th yeah, so, <coughs> so the other is the, the big one for Weaver. Are you 100% complete on that now? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, North Bennington graded, is that uh, delinquent taxes? The delinquent taxes. Yep. Okay. There she is. Did you find us? I did. Okay. <laughs> and Matt, the first few on that list were the ones that um, you needed for your yes. meetings. Yes. So that's why they have a And we have that yep. that will sign. You'll notarize tonight and we'll get yep. back to, to Rob Wilmington. Okay. Okay. I just had one other, uh, just curious. Did we ever get the um, separate billings from Kelly Field? Have you gotten them yet? Because I know this is one. Long no, long I get. Um, I'll follow up then. No, I get. Uh, I do get um, delivery slips okay. um, mailed to me, but I don't. I know it's so one payment again. I don't know if they just forgot to send them or. Uh, you do get the individual slips. I get some slips. Yep. Occasionally. Okay. But, but, we, still, but you, we still want for budget want. reasons to we that, allocate a, that a payment we, to go. We allocate that growth, that amount out. If you look on your uh, on the detail section of that tab, that is allocated to the three um, places. And then once we get the actual usage, we'll reallocate it. So. Okay, but you're, are you are you coming up with the numbers on your own, or did, did Kelly Fuel send you? No, like I don't three have any. We don't have any of the. No, they did yet. not. No. Okay, so I'll, but, I'll double. I'll follow up on but that. But once we do get that, it's right? I know, I know in the long run yeah. it'll all come out the right, but yeah. I know it'd be easier for you guys to be handed ahead of time. They said they were going to send it to you. I will. I'll follow up again and make sure they do that. Okay. Any other questions regarding the warrant? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move we approve the warrant for $106,522.05. I'll second that. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have a payroll warrant. And on that payroll warrant, you'll note that there's a couple of checks from last month that would have been. We normally do our warrant kind of in advance of of uh, the weeks until we get to the next meeting. But the, the tr um, what do you call them? Not trainees, what do you call them, Norm? Um, interns. 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 <laughs> yeah, yes. youths. Um, the interns mm -hmm. came in after, well in between this meeting and last meeting, so yeah. that's why they're all in there. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the payroll warrant. Okay, we'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, uh, well, we've got Martine's on the agenda. Um, 
But we could do that as citizen comment. Um, she asked to be put under new business. Okay. All right, so we'll just wait. We'll, if you can hold on a minute. <laughs> Um, so there aren't any other, well, there is a citizen who wants to come. <laughs> um, I guess most of you realize I spent a lot of time in Lincoln Square this summer. And over the course of the summer, I think I chatted with almost everybody who lives in the village. But one of the things that kept coming up was uh, people were talking about it would be nice to have some lighting to light up the fountain at night. And, and they say, especially in the wintertime, even when you have this kind of weird structure over it, uh, it's dark and nobody sees it. And we're thinking of maybe we have light inside the structure so you can see the fountain. Anyways, uh, Norm was foresighted enough to make sure there's already electrical uh, service into the, into the park coming out of the ball. So uh, there won't be any problem here. Uh, our problem was we really didn't know the proper way to light it. And so I got into a conversation with uh, uh, Russ, Lovely, uh, Russ Leslie, who's uh, a director of the Lighting Research Center at RPI. And this Lighting Research Center is, uh, apparently it's world famous, and it's known as the most prominent lighting research and educational center in the world. And they do some fabulous things. They are the ones that uh, did the lighting for the fountain for the uh, memorial. They did the lighting for the Park McCullough House, and we used them to. Design you mean the battle? The, the battle. Yeah. battle monument. And we used them to do the lighting for the gas station because we did. So the last thing we want is one of these, you know, gas stations that the light spread all over the village. And how do you do that and make it so it's safe to attract anyways? So what they have done. Uh, he has agreed to uh, run a class this fall with their graduate uh, engineering students. To uh, and they, the, the class happens to be a large class this year. There's uh, 15 students, and they're going to break up. And these are all graduate students. They've already got their engineering degrees. They're going to break up into four groups and present four proposals to the village. And we're going to do this at the symposium, that, that beautiful presentation room that they have at Bennington College. So I think it's going to be a, a fun thing. But what I'm trying to do is to make enough people aware of it that we can get a pretty good representation. And we'll vote on which of the presentations uh, the group likes the, the best. The problem is the timing. It's, uh, this is the last day of their uh, semester. <coughs> and so it's at 1.45 on a Friday. <laughs> and they said, we talked about other things. They said, well, you know how students are. But we're not going to have this done until 1 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and That's they want to get in. Most of them are, are, are going home someplace or leaving. Anyways, it's going to be at 1.45 uh, on the 9th. Uh, and I know it's not going to be convenient for a lot of people to make it. but. We certainly would encourage whoever you know, is available to do it. And especially, I want to make sure that the people that live near the square are representatives so they can, they can give their opinion on what, uh, how they like the, the uh, park with. And so what, what, I'm, what I'm assuming is going to happen is at the end of that session, we'll get everybody's opinion and have voted on which one uh, the village likes the most, will present that to the board and probably are not going to have enough money. We, we had like $4,000 left over in the, in the money that we raised for the uh, fountain and it may go over that, but we're, uh, Rachel's prepared to start raising some more money <laughs> if necessary. But we'll make sure we get, you know, get the approval of the board too, obviously, before we go any further. But uh, I think it's going to be a fun That's thing. That's great. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that could be really pretty. Another leveraging of uh, the great, you know, assets we have all around here. Yeah, it's amazing, you know, mm -hmm. and, and doing it at the college, I mean, that, uh, that symposium, I think, is just the right environment to present something like this, where they got all, because they all have all kinds of visuals yes. and everything that they'll be presenting to, the, to show. Sure. And you'll hang this up at around this hours. Week, uh, I've, I've got uh, emails of most of the people that block breaks. 
Oh, good. So I'm going to be emailing everybody and, you know, giving them a series of emails. front porch forum at two. Rachel wants to write personal letters to the major donors and, uh, you know, to just make sure they show up, first of all, because it's important. If we don't, if we don't get a good presentation, we'll be going to fall apart. Yeah. But I, I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to, to work with. We, I've met all the students. They came over on October 4th to view the fountain and see what it was like in daylight. And we told them as soon as Norm gets the winter cover on, and we'll let them know. And I said, come over at nighttime and see what it is. But the lighting is going to be at night. <laughs> what you see in the daytime? Are you adding side panels? Yeah. Right now, it's, it's going to be a couple weeks. Is it, is it, do we need them? I kind of like the way it looks. I really I don't know. Did anybody take like it? Like the words that protect it. From, the from last from last year? Yes. Probably. Yes. I don't, I don't have any pictures. I got it half completed. I have to take a picture. But it's but it's it looks really good now. It mm -hmm. keeps the moisture out of the bowl, which is what would cause cracking and freezing, and it pretty much blocks the salt. I mean it's the salt, yeah. Because well, no, the side you're gonna get off the any. sides coming in, the piles go by, it's gonna shoot it right up over the side of the Right? Isn't that what the sides are for? If you get salt well, that, last year, especially we, with the, we didn't with have the uh, drain and everything else, you're gonna because there, there was very little snow, so we didn't yeah. have the, right, the problem that you can have some years. And, you know, it's uh, cast iron and concrete. It, it, the last thing you want to have covered with salt. It's true. Mm -hmm. Although I noticed the finish didn't handle all that well this through this year. Right? Right. Right. Yeah, it's really... Anyway, yeah. out. put it on your it's calendars. And, uh, it is on my calendar, and there's also the water... Is that the, the week water before? meeting with your students on oh, the right. week before? Yeah. That's, right. yeah. That's on the first, yeah. yeah. Just so people remember. Okay, anybody got any questions or? No. I think that's the one thing that that we're missing down there right now. That's and I, right. And I don't. I think that those kinds of lights that just kind of paint light yeah, on the structures is really. You know, I, to me, in my opinion, when the lighting is right, you don't notice, or you just. That's right. You just appreciate it. And when it's wrong, everybody knows. <laughs> Did you put any kind of stipulations on it? Is the lighting going to be from within, or is it going to be, or they can do anything they want? They're, they're, I mean, they have, this, this lab is, is amazing. They're, they're, what they'll do is they're going to mock up the fountain in the lab and have them experiment with different types of lighting and see if they you know, make presentations. So That's great. We can see what it mm -hmm. looked like in real life. They, I've seen the work they did. I mean, it was simple. I mean, you think the lady for the gas station, but I was so impressed with what they gave us. You know, they mm -hmm. the whole thing and they showed what it would look like if you did this and, you know, how to hide the lights, you know, and then they're just, and it, it works. The battle monument looks great. And that was oh, something that when that, you know, that they went forever about that, about neighbors and too much glare. I, mean, I, just, I think it's perfect. Yeah. And I don't know how many of you have seen the part of the house lit up now. Absolutely gorgeous. The house itself or the carriage barn? They, both. Okay. They did all I've seen that. the carriage. Yeah. And they got the lighting and the cupola up above. I right. saw that. The lighting and the veranda, yeah. and then the, the whole carriage barn is outlined in lights. It's, it's very attractive. Wow. Good. David, thanks so much. Thank okay. You. We'll David. be there. David. I'm gonna go see what's happening. Yeah. David. Whoa. David. Whoa. David. Okay. Janice has I a question. I have a question. question. Yeah. Are there um, uh, limits in terms of the uh, length of time? It, will there be timing be on the timer? Yeah, the lights be on a timer? That's, that's, that's all there. Aside, yeah. but, uh, you know, that's something Norm's already talked about. We need the fountain. I mean, do we need the fountain on at 1 o'clock in the morning? Or could we, we say the electricity? Like, yeah. Like yeah. turning it off from 1 yeah. to 5 or something like yeah. that. So we'll but, go but, and find out. Yeah, but I think I think that's one of the things that uh, if they don't put in the design, you're probably going to add it. There's no reason to be you know right. using electricity when nobody around to see it. And the pump uses probably a lot more electricity than some LED lights are going to use. I'm assuming they'll go LED with everything that they do. But. Okay. All right. Thanks, David. Uh, Treasures report. The only additional thing I have today for everybody is, I'll leave a copy here for Lori, um, is the cash balances, just so you can see where those are. Um, our, our, at this point in time, well, at the end of October, 
our uh, general account with our cash was running pretty slim. We had one of the big bills that, um, thank goodness, we had some taxes paid in uh, early in the month because uh, we, we actually needed that to cover some of the bills. In the last week, we've had um, close to a million dollars in, in tax revenues come in. There's about 450000 left um, to have everything fully paid for the current year. Um, I will be at the depot again tomorrow and Thursday from 7 a.m. to 10, collecting taxes in person, and I'll be there again 3 to 5 on Thursday for any uh, late people who think at the last minute, oh my goodness, I forgot my taxes. Um, and since the post office closes before that, I will be there just for those late comers. Um, and then we'll see. But um, keep just to keep in mind to those uh, a vast majority of that million dollars or 1.4 goes to the school, not the right. And you're collecting for the school, but it's. Oh yes, you know, this is the. Total we operate this whole village on substantially so less. So of this money, of this money that's sitting in the tax yeah. account, the majority of that will be remitted to the schools yep. um, at the end of November. Uh, any other questions for Mary? And then I guess the only other thing I would comment on is Norm and I. I guess we're going to work on getting our grant money back for the for the project, which we desperately will need because we certainly didn't plan on that expense in, in the budget. Yep. And at least it's coming at a good point in time when we have all mm -hmm. the tax revenues. Okay. Uh, highway? Uh, just so everybody knows, leave pickup is over. It actually ended last Tuesday. Spent a considerable amount of time today picking up leads. We've got other things to do. Um, I worked on Park Street. Um, so basically, right now, all we're doing is just trying to gear up for our winter season. We got our salt on. We haven't hauled in any sand yet, um, just because of the rain and stuff like that. We don't want to try and get it out of dry. Point in time. Excuse me. But other than that, we're going to uh, hopefully get our parts that we still have to clean up uh, by the end of next week. And that'll be it. We'll wait for, for winter. Uh, our project on Water Street is uh, completed. It came in uh, pretty much in the timeline that we expected. And, you know, besides one minor glitch, I think we're so. Perfect. We all should be reasonably happy with it. Uh, I can't speak for the Havlin's privilege people. I wish they were still here, but uh, I haven't heard anything. He's told me it's on their side. just fine. Yeah. Yeah, he, was, he was there when I did the walkthrough with them, and he was happy with everything. Okay. So, the more water running down through, and, uh, the road should be put back together. Any other questions for? Uh, just so, back to leaves. We still available to contact you if they want to bring their own leaves to the boneyard. Yes, uh, we'll, and that, so that, that we would do. That, that we would do all year right. long. Yeah, right. absolutely. We could, uh, you know, during our regular hours, or you know, we could even open them up uh, on weekends, and people could dump them free of charge, certainly in, in uh, that pile. And, and we deal with it. Um, big thing, I think we have to kind of police that a little bit with garbage. Uh, people, some sometimes we get some good intended, and then the, the bad apple falls. So it brings in unwanted goodies. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a couch last week, so mm. nice. nice. Uh, <coughs> but yes, yes, right, that. Uh, you know, like I said, today, you know, we thought we were going out to pick up one pile, and we picked up eight. Any, um, any traction on that other item, that other leaf fact? Did you go anywhere with that? 
Yeah, we were all bad. Yeah. I think I think it's worth pointing out, and we'll have longer discussions about this. But I think it is. I think Norm's right. We need to start addressing uh, the cost benefit of this service that we offer in the village. Um, and you're going to do some research to find out what other municipalities um, in Vermont do it and how they do it, uh, and see if it's something we want to keep doing. And you just bring it right to our owner, right? Yeah, taking the lead is actually the best part of the deal. It's, it's how they get, and again, we've sat here, we've, we've certainly we've talked about it, we've asked people, this is how, you know, make a pile. You know, uh, people don't care, they put, a, they put a, a little pile here, a little pile there, a little pile here. You know, we're not out to break your lawn. You know what I mean? And it's, it's ridiculous. They're, you know, they're inside of a split rail fence, and they're all on both sides of this fence. And, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I feel that it's still a, it's still a a nice gesture on our side, for lack of a better way to put it's it. It's a nice, it's to, a nice I mean, just to, to make the boneyard available, saves you a trip to Bennington. I mean, if we just oh, yeah. if we limit it to, you know, you've got to bring your own, but it's right here in the center of town, and, and maybe set up a few days where you know somebody's there, we get a volunteer, or we get somebody down there to to monitor them, you know, and have it open for several weekends or whatever. I mean, that's. Well, I, even that would be it would be a step down from what we're doing now, but but certainly the, the amount not, of time and, and money we put into picking up leaves. I'm not prepared yet to uh, stop doing it, but I think we should have the discussion and find out, you know, because it's a service that we, you know, people feel like they pay for you know, in our taxes here. Not everybody does it, but the elderly have to end up hiring somebody, and that's tough. And, uh, or if we don't eliminate it, we, we put stipulations that if we ask you to do it a certain way, if it's not done that's that right. way, we, or, we won't pick them up until they're done. Well, I've said, I've said all along, and in a couple of, I've been throwing this out for a couple of years, it never seems to grab. If we should get an entity, whether it's uh, the Arts Exchange, the school, the Boy Scouts, the Pit Lake, and I could care less, but you buy a tarp and, uh, and they paint something on it, and they make it, they do something, so it's like this is it. And you purchase that, and if that tarp has covered your leaves, then I will stop and pick them up. And that piece, like in other communities where you have to buy those, and we're going to look into those composting bags, where you're going to have to buy those bags. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we purchase them. We put them at a, you know, a couple stores in town, and, you know, work something out where they make a couple cents on every bag that they sell. And that's what we're picking up. And that money gets generated into the line item that pays for the equipment to go. I have to go to the doctor for my shoulder. You know, you, you're gonna you're gonna risk me ripping my shoulder out at this time of year for to pick up some of these leaves in their own yard. That but, other that other unit that you were looking at that uh, looked like a lot better yeah, on the body because it's it's hooked on a it's yeah. it's a counterweighted absolutely and, and that's bigger 30, and it, that's thirty grand right there. Well, yeah. That one town is five square miles. They have three, but they they they, they just ro rotate through them. Right, but they it's uh, it's like Cambridge or something else, and we all go we we have driven through other communities that are closer that do this, and again this service, but they send out they have much bigger crews and much bigger equipment, and they can do other things. And well, I'm doing that. I'm on Park Street today trying to clean up Park Street. You know, I had to leave Park Street to go do that because it's going to rain now. And no, nobody cares about covering their leaves if they're frozen blocks. And then we have people that put them in the street. Well, after today, when you put them in the street, you're littered. You know, I'm going to call the cops and you're going to get a ticket. And that's life. Because it was over a week ago. And, it, you know, <coughs> now the people, and I'll say this, the, the people that go out and they start when we start doing this, and we've been picking up for a month. And they bring out the little pile, the little pile, the little pile, and they still got more. We kind of extend that to them a little bit because they're working on it. But what we get today is a person that never proud of doing anything and now has the pile the size of the dump truck. To be to be fair, I thought I read this in the minutes. We 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 advertised through the eight, which is today. That's that's no. what I thought. It's right first, in the yeah. Right in the and I asked you for clarification, and you said, and Tuesday. you said yes, it would be the final Tuesday. It would be the Tuesday. First after. Tuesday in November. 
but that but that was the first, and we we talked about it. I think I, I do because I remember talking about it at the meeting last time. And I remember reading the minutes that we did. This is not the night. We did say we'd go to, today. But. Just a heads up on that. Um, anything else for Norm? Uh, I I just wanted to say that I was really disappointed by the. Um, Graffiti in the Lions Park, and mm -hmm. it ha ha happened to be the day before the parade and or the Halloween parade. And Norm or somebody from the crew with you or whoever was the next, the very next morning, because it had to have had. I was there with my daughter, five-year-old, unfortunately, on Sunday morning. So it had to have happened Saturday night. Oh, it was there on Sunday as well. And it was there on Sunday, and then it was gone for the parade, so it was taken care of immediately. Norm went and took care of it, but really appreciate painted it that morning. Thank you. Luckily, yeah. she is not that good at spelling yet, but... Um, no, this was, this was really vulgar, nice. racist, uh, right. disgusting. And, and with that, the, the, the culprits, the, the bank and police are actively searching for her. They hit the Howard Park, the high school, and our park. So, so you know, Really, be aggravated as a taxpayer, yeah. because each community, whether you're Shaftesbury or North Bennington, pays in your own community. So your tax dollars had to go fix that problem, and then we all contribute to the high school, and now we got to go fix it over there. You know, so it's it's and it's and it's ridiculous. And here's the, you know, I, I I'll say this to the board, I'll say this to everybody watching TV: be vigilant, because I think no matter who wins, the opposite side is going to come out and. And I think we're going to have tag art all over this, you know, no matter which side of the selection comes, you know, and, and we need to watch for it because it costs us money. You know, I would love. Well, we're going we're gonna to get a camera system. And we're gonna, I would to love to plant a couple telephone poles and put up a board and let them graffiti right. the heck out of it. Give them a spot. And, you know, in. in, in, in let kids do whatever they want, and we'll stick it right on a hill. I got no problem with that. My buddies from CB already said we could. We already got the poles, you know. Yeah. You know. It's very frustrating. It is, and it costs you guys money because now the part that was really pretty, now is a bunch of paint and lots of problem, right? And there's just nothing we can do about it. You know? I also, uh, the, the parade was uh, a smashing success. There had to be over 300. It was, I heard estimates of 400. We're trying to figure out exactly what it was. But the rocks that you placed there, I heard compliments from a number of people who liked really? the way. Yeah. Shocked. Yeah. Shocked. yeah. Well, I am too. But <laughs> <laughs> no, they look, they're fine. I did notice the tree took a little singe, but um, it was a pretty good, good sized fire too, so. Uh, thank you for that. That's going to stay there. We're going to do something with flowers maybe in the summer in the spot. Um, maybe that's where you could put up a, something for kids to do their do their art on or something. Um, let's move along. Uh, nothing for DRB, <coughs> nothing from fire, nothing from water. New business. We have uh, Martina Tichi here to talk. I think about your concerns about a house on Main Street. Right. So um, John Rolick and I live um, right next door to 40 Main Street, which is a white um, uh, help me with this. Federal. It's a federal a Greek revival. A Greek revival. Greek revival. And um, on the other side of that is for being for air. So we're the blue house on the office side. On the, on the post office side of the street, that building was a um, reverse mortgage for the Simmons family. Art Simmons died, I believe, about a year and a half ago. Um, at the time, the bank um, evicted everybody in that home. I believe that there were uh, four units in the, in the main building, and um, I believe that's right. And uh, then the, it was given to, from the bank, they were done with it, there was the eviction, then it went on to HUD, HUD came and looked at it, I told 
talk to the people from HUD. They were not interested in the property, um, but they had a year where family, direct family of the Simmons family, had first refusal on the property. The family has no interest in the property. I, I only know that because I've actually talked to different family members over the past year. Um, so then it went from HUD, wrapped that property up, packaged it with a bunch of other buildings nationwide. I imagine this is how this happens. And um, it is now owned by a corporation out of the Midwest. Is that they're, right? they're based in Utah, but, but the, uh, the person responsible for this region is in Ohio. Right. And um, so I have talked to the fellows that come to uh, take care of the landscaping. They come every month. And uh, they had some choice words for the company that they work for, which I cannot repeat. But um, they said, it, you can't, you don't expect anything to happen here unless um, the village comes forward and makes some kind of motion. Um, so now it's been a year and a half, um, and these are my three concerns. Obviously, we live next door. I don't really notice the house or see the house. I don't really care, except that it's, I have noticed that the um, chimney is now separated from the building itself, and if and when it should come down, it's going to either come down on our car or our house and possibly on us, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it's just right there. Our driveway goes right up to that house, our property line. So it's a very narrow driveway. But my, my big concern is, I believe it is a fire hazard. I believe it's a health hazard. It is full of um, squirrels, but it's also, I did notice this summer, there were raccoons going in and out from the top, from the attic, and from um, the bottom. There's some openings where they could access the uh, basement. And um, my third concern is that it is right here on Main Street. In a perfect world, it would be beautiful if some Vermonter would come along. I've actually had a few people come talk to me. What did we know about the house? Because um, they happen to be builders and were interested in renovating. But their concern is he does, it no longer um, is even uh, ha passes requirements for Section 8 housing which is what HUD does now, but so, it's not even a HUD property anymore. So just for expediency, what, where we're at with this so far is I'm calling two or three times a week, that woman, she doesn't pick up the phone anymore, I just give her a message that we're gonna contact our, our lawyers and just start proceeding to the condemnation or whatever we can do that forces their hand. Mm -hmm. It may end up being a very expensive albatross, you know, around our neck, but uh, something needs to happen. I will say that if things go the way they typically go, um, you know, six months ago, eight months ago, um, there was an auction on Anita Bellin's old house, mm -hmm. and uh, the bank still stepped in and said they didn't, that they weren't ready to sell it, and so they pulled out the day of this this auction. Um, finally, it got worked through the system, and this week, the local person who's usually, I was talking to another realtor about this, there's, a, there's an outfit that's usually contacted by HUD to deal with the sales of these properties. House went up for sale, and it sold the day it went up for sale, um, before even a number of other interested parties could look at it. And uh, so that's what we're working towards, is that happening. And what the woman did tell me in Ohio is that she thought that this was a property that was in limbo between whatever wrapped up bad debt uh, package they had and HUD, and that that was the problem. And it still hadn't gotten to the point where um, HUD then dispenses of it in some way 
But again, I'm just I'm going to keep at that. We'll probably send a letter from our lawyer. Um, the house has got potential. The bones on it are probably still very good. Oh yeah, I mean, I but it needs to be gutted and yeah. the back end torn off. And and I, there are interested builders. You know, there's a fellow just bought that house that burned just below your. Sure. For nothing. And, and also, this house is in a neighborhood of Seven Other. It's there's we have a little neighborhood over yeah. there of Seven Other homes, you yep. know, that have been occupied, you know, up until well, recently. No, and I and I appreciate you get you know yeah. twisting my arm to start doing that, and now it's just personal to me to to make this woman's life miserable, right. um, and we'll continue to do that because it's. You know, it's that it's on Main Street, and yeah. once you see everybody that goes to the post office, to the train station, I mean, it's you know, it's there, and it still is. I think Matt is <coughs> correct in that the architecturally, I think the bones of the house it's probably sound, but it, you know, everything would have to be brought up to code, <coughs> electrics and plumbing and whatever. And uh, in the meantime, it's just been, it's for many years now, yeah. unfortunately, the uh, family that owned it was not able to keep it in good repair. Its sister house sits right across the street and it's immaculate. Yeah. You know, so it's, I would say that house is probably 1850s, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, uh, so we're so we're gonna yeah. keep at it, and yeah. um, I'll take it to the next step of discussing right. with our attorney what can we do in those situations. And is and is it possible that um, if uh, something can be done, just at least in the meantime to shore up the chimney or to well, we can't. We we can't just go onto the property and no, and, and wrap up. But I've called my insurance agency, and they will not do any prevention. Um, it doesn't, our insurance will not. Well, no, there's just nothing you can, that's the point. We have to get them to, to deal with it. We're just opening ourselves up, I think, for exposure. I mean, the only thing we could do is if we get the inspector here to deem that it's a potential, wow, right. a potential hazard, then he could force their hand and, and if we can get if we can get him to come over, he has done he has done in the past for us. The Bennington uh, guy, right. Um, right. That's, years. Larry, that's Larry. Great yeah. plan. so that's a possibility. Yeah, that would be great. Would you be willing to talk to Okay, just ask him what what they do in these situations and how they can how. Um, I'm going to make a note here. Yes, I would hate to see it deteriorate and go that it could actually be rescued. Yep. I mean, it's, you know, this, again, it doesn't belong to HUD anymore, but what HUD does in California now, as of this year, is they're taking these old houses and they're um, revamping them and they're making them available to vets. There's a whole program now in California. I'd be all for that. Yeah. If I somebody would Absolutely. fix it up and, Absolutely. and, you know. But, you know, I don't know what, it, you know, it's something new in California. And I think, you know, that's, that's a smart move. It would be an interesting, uh, you know, rather than have an abandoned building in any community. Yeah. It, it rescues it. You know, this, there are communities all over the country that, you know, you can see yeah. this. Okay, thanks, Martina. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, one last item that we have is uh, the uh, Planning Commission has made a recommendation of two zoning amendments to the truck that we should consider. Um, I sent out a note to you all that, that I want to delay on the, uh, uh, the subdivisions that, um, oh, this isn't even on here. This is actually both the things that deal with the oddity that, um, so Dan wrote all this up in the language that is necessary for us to approve. What this is about is that the zoning bylaws never really took into account 
instances where they ran a line up through like a river, like Parent Creek, mm -hmm. separating the Rod's um, apartment thing and the industrial and, the, and how the zoning in some cases isn't the same even though the building spans across. Mm -hmm. And so, and he's looked into that this is how other people have dealt with this. Um, Wait. Well, now I'm confused whether this 8-1 is the... They're kind of tied together how I, the way I read them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we dealt with, right, we dealt with three different... Um, so we need to prove these just to clean up the um, existing um, dissonance that's in the, that's in the, in the bylaws. Uh, do we want to read them and then vote on them individually? We can. I'm just curious if we need to. Uh, section 2, districts, 2.4 lots in two zoning districts. If a district boundary divides a lot of record on the effective date of these bylaws, the regulations for the less restricted part of such lot may extend into the more restricted part as a conditional use with the approval of the development review board after site plan review. So. It's still a conditional use, meaning it will always need to go before the DRB anytime some change would happen. It doesn't just give them the. <coughs> it'll automatically assume the right. Right. rest of the two. They've got to look at it for the board. That's right. Do you want a motion to approve that? I do. I will uh, move that we approve the language for the Section 2 2.4 change as proposed by the DRB. I will second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and the other uh, 8.1 permitted uses uh, in the East C district, which is the what? Commercial. <coughs> I'm trying to come up with the environmental, environmental conservation. Scene. No. District? No. The division of a parcel of land into two or more lots for the purpose of sale, lease, or development, provided the lots confirmed to middle. Oh, so he's changed. So this is the one I don't. I want to hold off on. I'm, I'm pretty sure, and I'll get clarification, and we'll deal with it next month. The college has come to us asking for a change in the way they want to sub make subdivisions on the whole college property. And 15 years ago, we granted them this uh, uh, planned unit development zone, um, which said, look, we don't really care what you do up there as long as it doesn't violate you know, height restrictions, any of the things. We don't want you to have to come back every time you want to place a building on your massive property. So that changed the zoning and kind of turned it all into one zoning. They don't want to change that. They just now are in a situation where they realize that they can leverage their land more effectively in terms of uh, borrowing if they separate out their parcels into units that have have their own distinct value. Uh, so they can go to a bank and use it as collateral, basically. Like, they, you know, if you just look at the whole thing, nobody, what value do you put on that? But if you separate, so they've turned it into, th I think, three distinct parts. The main campus, which will just still always be the campus, and then two other parcels which they could sell, they have no intention to do so, but it allows them to get, uh, to use as collateral in, in loans. And uh, we had some concerns at the DR, at the commission. We wanted to meet with them and talk to them about that and what they were, and what they were thinking. And so, um, Bob Howe, who's on the Planning Commission, and myself are going to meet next Monday at four o'clock with uh, their business director and their their land person, and I would like one other trustee to come with, if anybody would. I can probably do that. Yes, yes, I can come too, but would that make it? Yeah, we need, well, no, actually, I could have two. We, I don't know how many We can't have three. We can't have three. That's right, that's right. We need just one of you. You would be better to go with your background in law and everything else. <laughs> he, might be, he might be more valuable than I am at that. So I, I just said I could go because I, I couldn't right. make it, but if you could go, I'd probably prefer it. Yeah, if you need somebody, I can go too. I mean, put me in the back. I will. I will just send out a reminder on Saturday or something. Yeah. Keep that in mind that maybe on Monday, if you have, if you can, it's not that big of a deal. It's just an informal 
uh, conversation with Brian Murphy and, and uh, the other people there about, you know, what their long-term plans are, how does this affect, affect perhaps the way that we look at um, tax exemption and things like that on the, on the parcels. So I think what they're doing is a neat, it's a neat idea uh, and it makes sense, but. So that's, I think, what that's speaking to. If it's not, we'll have to come back and adopt that. I'm just, it's, I'm drawing a blank on how that applies to anything different than that. Well, and that's with the EC, some kind of education. Yeah, I think yeah. it's yeah. actually yeah. called a PUD, Planned Unit Development. Um, okay, old business. One old business I have that will do an executive is a re, um, a re-signing of the lease agreement with the of this building because uh, uh, the, the state changed their mind on how, on how they want after we had signed it. Uh, so we just have to do that again and submit all the payments and stuff. So we'll do that in executive just to go over that. It's a contract. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Um, anything just, else? I'll just share that. Um, the charter changes that we went through um, a year or so ago, uh, they were finalized in February of this year and they are now posted online. So, uh, if, and I'll talk to Rob about getting them on the um, funds website, mm -hmm. but um, it's uh, under Vermont statutes online and it's uh, uh, title 24 the appendix on municipal charters uh, they they will put into effect um, some changes at our annual meeting our village That's meeting right. it's because it will uh, one of the changes is the uh, length of terms of um, right. trustees and also it changes the, the treasurer's term from uh, to coincide with the school district oh. so um i have to think out how, how that happens we'll have to I go guess. back and look at all that yeah <laughs> right um, in january we'll yeah. look down. there's some other changes but those are the major ones that well that was a long time coming thank you yeah. janice i think you did the the uh, lion's share of that uh work you you helped out too in the yeah. beginning and we had help from bennington college and Bennington well. college that's right uh, any other old business? I will entertain a motion to go into executive session briefly. I'll move to go into executive session. Second. All those in favor? And that's the discussed contracts, right? Contracts. Yeah.